You see how when the, the brush is a little splayed out, when I do a stroke, you'll be able to see the striations of it, right? Like like if I do it down here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you know, it's it, you're, you're not you're not every hair is conglomerated, so you're getting a nice little pull. You're getting a nice little directional pull. And that's looking pretty good. I just want to try to go a little bit darker in the eye sockets. I don't want to go crazy though, you know? Maybe just a smidge. Going back to that Payne's Gray FW ink. This time I will add a little water to it, a little more. I'll try to float some in there really quick and just see. Don't, don't want to lose my eye, right? Pinched it. There's a little bit more there. Okay. Do we have a spider creeping in on the image? Do you think it'll come all the way down? What are you doing, spider? He's into my brushwork, apparently. I like the tangled web you're creating, Scott. And some of this we won't even have to rework later. We'll just be able to let it sit and just be a texture with the right temperature and the right value. A little bit of that, even that old cross hatching underneath there peeking through. And that's cool, man. I mean, really, you know, you're trying to have a conversation with your piece, right? You're trying to speak to it. And um, this, I, this is one of the ways you go about it, right? Because now, like, I did all that stuff, so I will have to start reacting to what just happened. And that's going to inform the choices I'm going to make. So just for a little bit of clarity, though, I'm going to go back into the black ink with a little bit of that red that we did earlier. Just a little bit. I'm mixing it up, and I just want to go in, and I want to, again, cut out. Uh, I think I'm going to go more black than that. Why my hands get all dirty. You have to forgive me. I'm always pinching and stuff. Oh, I should probably be wearing gloves, but at least I'm not pinching oil paint. Okay. And as I had mentioned to you guys, once you get that first cut of acrylic ink down on your piece, every subsid every every other coat is gonna want to stick a little bit better. So I can just go back in and re-get some of this goodness. to, of course, look at my drawing that I'd done before. It's printed out right next to me. So even if some of this gets a little lost, I don't panic. There's no panicking. I can always find it. I've drawn it how many times now? I can draw it again. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. And we lost.
across our piece of wood that holds us up. That's okay. All right, I'm pinching some of that black off of this. this stage, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dip my dip pen into the black ink. Just like that, we get a little bit of that stubble on the side of the head there. some of that right there. And you'd think that, oh my God, he's using the metal nib on this thing again. It's going to go right back down to the metal, but nope. I mean, if I really hammered it, yeah, every once in a while you'll do a little thing and it'll scratch all the way through the paint. But generally, I have a pretty light touch. It's, it's almost like the more you paint, you become like a surgeon. You're just really thinking about brush pressure, how much you can control it. There we go. Bringing all that back. Just a little bit. We'll just go ahead and just start getting into this eye a little bit. I can still see what I got under there. And it's going to allow me to just pick my spots. And some of the spots might need more accenting in a little bit. We're once again reestablishing that drawing. Pretty familiar to you guys. I've been here how many times doing this? And we're doing it again. Boom. Cool. using some lighter values than the black. I mean, I was on black before, right? So I'm going back into some of those burnt umbers. I want to retain some of that warmth. I don't want it to go straight to black. Because now that everything has its base middle value, I can react, just like we were talking about earlier. I can decide, okay, I just need to push this this dark. I just need to do this here. I would 
say my pin doesn't usually clog, but every once in a while it gets a little, it gets a little uh, persnickety. It needs to just be cleaned off, but it tends to flow pretty well. Every once in a while I will have a giant blob of ink that shows up. And you just gotta live with it. You gotta react to it. You gotta try to turn that into something cool. It's almost like I'm re-establishing my drawing for the third or fourth time. Superman is looking scruffy, isn't he? My wife and I have a saying when I haven't shaved in a while to trim the beard up when everything else starts growing in. It's, it's hobo level. What hobo level are we? And I'm actually a pretty big hobo at this moment. Probably hobo level five, I would guess. That's pretty hobo. I'm constantly kind of darting my eyes back over to the drawing that I had done. I'm also periodically looking back up at the original reference I built for this piece, the photo reference. And I actually look at that at this stage, I look at that less than the other piece because I'm really trying to make my judgment calls um, you know like based on what's happening on the piece in front of me and every once in a while I'll get sick of using the pen and I'll have to switch back to a brush <laughs> I really want to get those eyes back, though. So let me uh, let's see what we can do about that. problem is, of course, is that, like with the black, you'll go ahead and you'll draw this stuff out and then it'll start drying, drawing, drying matte and you'll lose some of that contrast that you get when you reestablished it, but that's part of the process. We'll probably have to go back in and re... I'll redo a few things. So I'll re put the gloss varnish on areas of it so that we can judge it correctly. Okay, let's get a little deeper into detail. I'm going to go the other way in value now. I'm going to just go ahead and go towards the positive, right? So I'm using the 
golden titanium buff. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to kind of carve back in a few of the highlights. And it's going on kind of translucently, which is what I want. And almost like a luminosity filter in Photoshop, it it seems to react a little bit to what's underneath there. So if you've got a lot of warmth underneath there, if you're working translucently, then some of that warmth is going to peek through. So I can dip back into the same titanium buff and do a lot of work with it. And it's depending on what's underneath it. Is, is what it, how it's going to appear, right? Scrub it in there a little bit. Go for a little bit of that texture. But we can mix it with color too. So I'm back into my slurry. I just took a little bit of that titanium buff into the slurry. Now I'm going to just go in and kind of do this. It's usually going to dry a little bit darker and it initially goes down. Trying to use that stroke direction, you know, as I'm breaking it from different angles. All in an attempt to build volume, where you have intersecting lines, it's going to indicate a plane has changed direction. Squinting at the piece, I'm seeing how these values are acting in relation to my reference that I've drawn and that I've printed out. trying to get these little tiny hatch lines with a brush, it really comes down to your touch. It's almost like I'm pinning with the last hair that's dangling off the brush or, or you know, like almost the paint that's hanging off the bottom of the brush, like not even touching it with the bristles sometimes. It's like that light of a touch. It's a dusting. But because I laid down that gradient to begin with, me making these moves within that gradient, the gradient's doing most of the work, I guess is what I'm saying. 
I mean, you've seen me. I've moved all over this piece with pretty much the same value, right? I mixed up that paint, and now I've been hitting it everywhere. And depending on what's underneath it is how it reacts. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get used to the brush again. But once I get it, I can get pretty fine with it if I want to. You know, if you're used to pressing down with the dip pen, moving the brush, moving to a brush could be a bit of a transition, but you'll get it fast enough. Layering some of those cross hatch marks. I just pinched the brush, so now there's less paint on it. And I can just feather that out into that direction there, rounding that cheek back. Amazing, right? I mean, there's still paint on this brush and it's still going down. Even after I've wiped it with my fingers. in there. back into the pure buff. I'm staying in the buff titanium though for now because, you know, I know once I go to the real titanium, they, that's the top end, right? But if I stay in that buff titanium, which is just a little bit darker, you can, you can resist the urge to go straight to highlight on everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go into a little bit of a blue. I'm going to move that into the piece a little bit. As a way of, it's kind of a gray actually, but as a way of like still rendering up, but cooling off the temperature. A little bit as I go back. Let's get a little darker with that. So you can see that's a much cooler temperature over in that side. but it's also going to let me come up into the eye a little bit, in the shadow of the eye. I'm 
know if you guys can hear that, but my neighbor has decided that it'd be a great day to run some kind of high-powered remote control car. It is riving in the background. There we go. I can go ahead and bring some of this bluer color down into here. I can round out this little bit of the underneath the lip with it. And look how much work, again, how much work I'm able to do with just this one little cool value, right? I'm moving it all over the space. And it all comes down to that gradient underneath. That set the bar. That little pinch. This brush I'm using, it's a Rosemary, I think a Rigger 273. And it's such an interesting brush because it's not exactly the neatest tip on it, but it breaks in weird ways because of that. Like meaning that it just it just has a bit of a there's a bit of a randomness to it sometimes that I feel is beneficial to a piece. I'm just going to scumble some of this in there now, lighten up that, if you could even see that transition. Dip by dip, dab by dab, it slowly builds up. Let's go the other way now. Grab some darker value here. Look how gross my hands get. Oh my god. I go out to dinner tonight too. Uh, it's gonna require some scrubbing. Pull it around that way. A little bit over there. I'm just mixing up a dark value over here. I just needed it to be a little bit more fluid. Everything was drying out a little bit. I'll test it over in the hair where it doesn't really matter. Looks pretty good. Not a bad idea though to test your paint before you commit to it on your piece. in the air a couple times first. Boom. 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 
There we go. Hmm. Okay. Boop. Boop. Okay, why not? Put that there. Come back to the other side. Boom, boom, boom. I pulled the brush. I pulled the brush again between my fingers, getting most of the paint off of it. Hatching down in some of these areas. It's just neat because the whole thing starts to get this sort of choppy vibe to it. I'm going to take some of that golden crimson. Scrubbing it on my piece of paper to the left there. Knock it back. Yeah, we'll come down this way. Like that there. A little bit of red on those cheeks. So he's probably getting to a point where I need to step away for a little bit and come back and reassess things and see what the next move is going to be. And usually when I say that to myself, it's another 20 minutes before I actually do it. But. So for right now, maybe we'll hold up on it. Do I mean that? I don't know if I mean that. I might not mean that. Hold on. It's actually some pretty strong blue I'm throwing down on there. Too strong really, but sometimes I like to make a little strong accent and then it'll give me something to react to later. Let's 
swing it around the neck there. There we go. Okay. I think that's a good place to hold up and reevaluate and come back. 